Hi, everybody. Uh, I just finished up with a wonderful World Read Aloud Day uh, 2018. I uh, had a great time Skyping with classrooms all over the country, and I have four videos that I want to put on my website now. One of them is going to be me reading an excerpt from I Am Drums. The other is going to be me reading from a book that hasn't been published yet. Um, classes, some of the classes chose one or the other. Some of the classes we had time for one and not the other, and I didn't want anyone to miss out if your class didn't um, get a chance to hear one or the other. The other thing I'm posting is I'm going to post a uh, video of me playing my quick little drum solo. So if your class uh, chose the drum solo over the guitar, um, they can watch it again. If they chose the guitar, they can now enjoy the drum solo. And I'm also going to post one of me playing the guitar so you can get whatever you missed. And the idea here is that every class for World Read Aloud Day had a different video. And, or a different Skype experience, and I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to experience all of it. So I'm going to start here with um, reading a section from Chapter 2. It's a bit of a condensed version of it. Um, so if you did not, if you chose the new book and didn't get a chance to hear me reading I Am Drums, here is one for you right now. <clears throat> My parents still own an encyclopedia, a real encyclopedia, not something you find online that claims Bigfoot invented the light bulb. I'm talking about a collection of 400-pound books full of stuff you never wanted to know until your teacher assigned a research paper about it. I'm glad my parents still have them because they make a solid thump that's perfect for the sound of toms, the drums mounted on top of the bass drum. They meld flawlessly with an old, falling-apart Calvin and Hobbes book that I use as a snare. It's a paperback, so it makes a nice, high-pitched thwap when I hit it. A huge, and I mean really huge, dictionary is my bass drum. So I put it on the floor under my computer desk and stomp it with my Converse All-Stars whenever I need a thick womp. My computer desk is kind of funny because it doesn't have a computer on it. My parents call it a homework desk to make me feel better about my lack of a computer, which seems kind of weird, even if it is a pretty good place to do homework. It beats working in the kitchen where my younger brother Brian complains nonstop about how much homework third graders get. Whenever I go near Brian, he says, Stop staring at me! And I say, I'm not staring at you. Can you see me right now? Yes. How could you see me unless you're staring at me? If I was staring at you, my eyeballs would be on fire. Mom, Sam's staring at me. It's all downhill from there. I've been calling my computer homework desk, my drum desk, for five years, ever since I saw a drum solo by John Bonham from Led Zeppelin in an old music documentary. My brain exploded as his arms flew across the kit during the song Moby Dick. I went online and researched each piece of a standard drum set that night, memorizing the purpose and setup for each one. I learned the hi-hat is two symbols that clamp together when the drummer presses a pedal, and the crash symbol sounds just like its name and the snare is the backbeat in rock music because it sounds like someone getting punched in the face in a martial arts movie. My desk set has two levels, so I put the Encyclopedia Toms and the Calvin and Hobbes snare on the lower level. I pulled the latest edition of the Chicago Tribune out of the recycling bin and put that on the top shelf. The Big Fat Sunday paper is my crash symbol, and the Monday and Tuesday papers are my ride and hi-hat. This is my drum, homemade drum set, the only set my family can afford. And I make it work pretty well, thank you very much, even if it just makes me imagine the real thing. Sometimes I put earplugs in to dampen the noise and make it sound thicker. If I hit as hard as I can, I can almost hear what it would be like if I was rocking out on a real set. That's usually when someone barges into my room and tells me to knock it off. Today is nice because no one's home yet, and I've been rocking out for a full 20 minutes when a thought enters my mind. Listen to the message. Find out what Dr. Pullman said so you can at least have an idea of how bad it's going to be. I stand up from my drum desk and walk downstairs, the wooden steps creaking and the railing rattling. I pick up the phone and listen for the double click of the dial tone that confirms there is a new message. I punch in the four-digit password and hit one to hear new messages, and I hear Dr. Pullman's voice. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Morris. This is Daniel Pullman from Kennedy Middle School calling about a lunchroom incident this afternoon that involved your daughter. Please call me back whenever it is convenient to do so. I can be reached at... Dr. Pullman rattles off a number, but I'm not really listening. He wants to have a personal conversation with my mom and dad. That's not good. They'll be mad just for being inconvenienced. Not my mom so much, but my dad. Oh man, you don't want him mad. 
you pretty much lose every privilege you can imagine, even if it's only a little bit your fault, even if you just lost control for a split second, even if you felt totally humiliated. There's a loud beep, symboling the end of the message, followed by a computerized female voice that says, Press 7 to save this message. Press 9 to delete this message. I pull the phone away from my ear and try to come up with a way to explain this to my dad. I don't want him any madder at me than he already is. He spent the whole school year fielding calls about how I'm falling behind and not taking middle school seriously and how I still think I'm a fifth grader or something. It's late March. A little over two months from now, it will be summer, and I will be free from the pressure and agony of school. Free to enjoy Kristen's annual pool party in early June and a summer full of wild, crazy fun after that. Can't I manage to make it two more months without getting into more trouble with my dad? The computerized voice says, Please make a selection. Press 7 to save this message. Press 9 to delete this message. My hand shakes, but I slowly bring my index finger down. It lands on the number 9. Your message has been deleted. I hang up the phone and run back upstairs, trying to forget the message ever existed. Because as far as anyone besides me and Dr. Pullman knows, it never really did. Thank you for listening, guys. I hope you had a good time with World Read Aloud Day.